In the heart of England, the birthplace of football, we find the small town of Ashbourne. Tradition is still very much alive here. Each year, one tradition completely shakes up Ashbourne. For centuries, the so-called mass football is played here for two days in a row, on Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday. Ashbourne is one of the very few places where this primal form of football is still being played, under the name of Shrove Tide Football. A large part of the male population takes part in it, and it can get rough. The shopkeepers take protective measures. At a fixed point in the center of town, and after a short speech, the ball is tossed up by a man of standing. Some years ago it was Prince Charles. The game is between two teams, the uppers and the downers, those living upstream the river Henmore and those living downstream. The number of participants is unlimited and easily reaches 100 on each side. The pitch has no boundaries and is composed of the public space in Ashbourne and the surrounding fields. The game starts at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, after the singing of Old Lang Syne and God Save the Queen. Each year a craftsman makes fresh new balls in a traditional fashion, filled with cork scrapings. Local artists paint the balls with unique colorful pictures and information. Then it breaks loose. The only rules of the game are that the players not harm each other intentionally and that public and private property are not damaged. For centuries this game was played in many places in Great Britain, but the authorities feared a loss of control and in the course of time did everything they could to ban mass football. In this they succeeded. Shrovetide football in Ashbourne is a rare example of mass football to have survived. From this pure people's game, with the ball at the center, both rugby and modern football evolved in the 19th century. The aim of the game is to score, but where?
The upper goal can be found two and a half kilometers up Hanmore River. It consists of a millstone immured in the riverbank, Sturston Goal. When a player manages to press the ball three times against the millstone, he has scored, and the ball is his for keeps. The downwards goal, also a millstone, is two and a half kilometers downstream, some five kilometers from the other goal. This is the Clifton goal. And this is the key moment, the scoring. He who scores obtains eternal fame and the ball that comes into his possession will be a lifelong proof of his heroic action. But scoring is not easy. It is preceded by a long and tenacious fight, a war of attrition. Shrovetide football is unpredictable. The mass is like a blind beast with a hundred legs, going anywhere at random. Now they have only been at it for some three hours, meaning that they still have five hours to go, for the game continues uninterruptedly until 10 o'clock at night. This man is signaling his teammate that they did something with the ball. Everybody keeps pushing, but where is the ball? Now they begin to understand that the ball has gone. Then they see through the plan of their opponents. They keep going until dusk falls at the end of the afternoon. But even in the dark the game continues. 
Here they are, in pitch dark, standing in the middle of the river, where they will remain in deadlock for over one hour. Then the game moves to the outskirts of Ashbourne, with undiminished energy. Although, for some, the batteries are empty. It's now 8 o'clock. And here they go again. Eventually they will move into the fields and there in the middle of a meadow in total darkness today's game ends after an eight hours long match at 500 meters from the Clifton goal. No scoring on the first day. The next day, on Ash Wednesday, follows the second round. The Opperts meet at their favorite pub. And so do the Downers. <laughs> then the players meet for the toss-up. The man with the ball is carried there by the players. At 2 o'clock sharp, the game starts again. Behind the onlookers, fast runners are waiting for the ball, hoping to make a speedy dash in the direction of the goal. But the game moves into the center of town, blocking traffic completely. Then it arrives on the outskirts. Direction stirs them go. Oh, 
It moved on into the fields, still heading for the Sturston goal. Nothing stops the players. Here, between thorny branches, the game gets stuck, totally stuck, while it slowly starts snowing. But it does not lessen the spirit. After one hour, some onlookers head for home. But the players go at it with renewed energy. And then the ball is free. Here they go again. Nobody's thinking about giving up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Around six o'clock in the evening, the game moves further into the fields. There are still four hours to go.